Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about 001 Game Creator. Now, I looked at this guy about three or four years ago when it was in a previous Humble Bundle, and it's back. So we're going to do a quick rundown of what 001 is all about, let you know if this Game Creator is a good fit for you, or if it is something that you should pass on, uh, because it is available in this bundle. It's got the dumbest name ever, so I'm not even going to read it, but what you see here, organized into three different tiers. You buy a hard dollar tier, you get all the stuff below it, you decide how your money is allocated between Humble Charity, the publisher, and if you so choose to do, and thank you so much to do to help support Game From Scratch. You'll notice the one dollar tier is crap it's dross don't even bother it's just a bunch of design documents that you don't need at the next tier up you get the game engine itself now this tier never makes sense because of just the way that the bundling works for the most part it might work out it's curious to see if that's the case but you're getting the base game engine here uh, for about ten dollars us or for 15 bucks us you're also getting some uh, learning courses these two courses right here as well as the point and click adventure kit the 3d step dungeon main kit, the visual novel kit, and then of course the base game engine is available in the other tier. So what we're going to do is jump in and take a quick look at this engine and see if it is a good fit for you. So here we go. We're going to show you quickly uh, three of the types of games it creates. It also, we have this 3D dungeon here. Uh, again, just don't do 3D with this game engine. If you want to work in 3D and you need an easy game engine, go check out Copper Cube or um, Game Guru Max or even just Godot or Unity. Uh, this is not a good choice for 3D, even if you're looking for something really simple. It's just kludgy, and I wouldn't go there. Just don't do it. Trust me on that. So instead, I'm going to look at the base template. This is um, an action RPG style game. Uh, you see here, world map set up uh, like so, and then that transitions based off of this little switch layer over into the inn like so. So this is the world editing environment. You're going to find out of the box, this game engine feels very RPG maker like. So uh, you'll notice if I come in here to point mode and I select something, so here is a shop vendor. I'm going to right click and do an edit on said vendor. And you're going to see you have things out of the box like base statistics, like wisdom uh, and attack. Uh, you have various different equipment items that you can put in here. You can create equipment such as armor, like I could add this necklace to this. So you do have inventory and NPCs and stats and all that stuff out of the box like you would expect from, again, an RPG Maker style game. But you don't need to use all this stuff. Just know that it is always there. Uh, and then on top of that, your programming system for this guy is done using this visual scripting language. So you see here the talk to event for this guy. Uh, let's go ahead and edit the script controlling that. So this is an NPC uh, starts starting event is right here. And then what you do, so when you talk to this NPC, uh, it will create this advanced message box. Let's go ahead and double click that one. We'll bring up the editor on that. So can I interest you in anything? So you got the vendor here uh, and then it branches off depending on what you say. So goodbye, safe travels there or branches over here. So show the shop. You can show the shop calling the show shop event here. And then uh, if they buy something, you can go ahead and equip said item. So it's just a sword over here, save the game, and off you go. So this is the control system for everything in this game engine. If you like the look of this, if you, this makes sense to you, this is just the way things are done. You can also switch over to a pure text mode, which, by the way, is going to break everything because you can only go one direction. And you're going to notice it's a very basic-like programming language. So if you want to use text instead, that option is available to you. Uh, then other than that, you have your typical world building tools here. So you see we're in, uh, we go over here from edit mode over into draw mode. And it's a typical tile map editor. You've got your four different layers of floor, lower object, upper object, and then the walls in the world. If I want to add, for example, this sink into the world, I could just select it and put it in like so. So we've got a variety of sinks. Come over here. You can set up your tile maps. If for some reason we want a pop machine in our medieval world, you can go ahead and create it that way. You want to uh, add an entity into the world. You create things as actors. You can see that all the actors are in this particular world. So, for example, here is a man. Here's another guy over here. Uh, you can create and edit with the actors. You can also set uh, automatic movements for them. You can do pathfinding. You can have automatic AI and so on. So if you're creating an RPG Maker-esque kind of game, this is what the out-of-the-box experience is like. And then for this kind of stuff, honestly, uh, it works. Now, if you want to go ahead and create your game, this is also a very simple part of this. Uh, build your game. Just go to build. And you see here you can build it for Windows via Windows installer or create an EXE. You can create it for Steam. You can create an HTML5 game. Android as an APK or AAB. Uh, you can create an iOS app as an IPA. I still think you're going to have to sign it using a Mac, however. Uh, signed Android app, 
or dedicated online multiplayer server. So you've got a lot of options out of the box and that's your build instructions. So if you wanna build your game, just click over here, build it and done. So that's actually pretty cool. It's really easy to get your game up and going. And as you saw, pretty good platform support going on. So next up, we're gonna show you one of the other options here. These are actually available as DLC. So come back here, you close your uh, platform. So if you go ahead and create a new game, you come back to uh, this window, which should be here right now. So these are already created games. So if you wanna create a new one, you just create it this way. And the stuff that you're getting in this bundle, so the other things here, this guy, this guy, and this guy, they're all DLC kits. Uh, and they've got a number of functions, et cetera, available for um, the particular task you're working on. So we've got uh, point and click, we've got uh, the 3D step maze, and then visual novel. So come back here. I've already done uh, the visual novel. We'll go ahead and show you how that works. Very same setup, very similar approach. So come down here, you got a variety of different levels available. You can test your game at any time by clicking this. It will go ahead and run your game. Uh, there's debugger support available here as well. But you see here, you've got a world. This is the world over here. So come up here to the environment. You can see you set the background of your environment like this. So black background, you got the airship in front of the black background. Uh, it's just loaded as a large sprite in the world. And then you add these actors inside of it. So this guy, for example, is one of the actors in here. So go ahead, click that, edit. And then what you're gonna notice here is this guy has um, a script attached to it. So on mouse over, he does branching dialogue. Uh, and then what you do is you can then navigate other to other scenes. It's gonna be part of the GUI that shows up down here. And then those scenes will show up, you branch over, and then again, branching control, various different actors in the world. You'll also notice you have things like lights in the world, like, like this. Uh, you can see the light effect on the world and off. It's very mild, uh, but you can see it there. And then you can add environmental effects like rain and so on over top of things. And you can control all of that using code. You can attach code to an environment itself. So over here, for example, I can have uh, direct code control. Uh, oh no, it's over here that I set it. So I think it's here. Uh, we can set up a code to work here so I can do properties of this guy and then have it, this is the code that's gonna run when you enter this zone, for example. Uh, and you can see here, these are the various different locations you can travel out to. So if you wanna create uh, a visual novel, super simple for that. And again, each guy, you have the easy dialogue for each person you deal with and all dialogue is done using these branching controls as well. Uh, and you have specific dialogue functions available here uh, and you can have it update variables in the world and so on. So when it comes to creating a, a visual novel type game, it's actually still a pretty good system. It's definitely a little older and clunkier and then you'll notice at the same time, you still have all of the stuff from like RPG and sprite type things. So if I come over here and draw, you're gonna see we still have tile map, map stuff available over here. No tile map set up for this particular game, but you see all that stuff is still ultimately there. But again, for visual novels, this actually does a pretty decent job and it's got pretty much everything you need out of the box. Uh, so that is what the one DLC is. Uh, the other DLC we've got going on is uh, this uh, point and click style game. Very similar approach. The Really the big difference, so you got actors in the world. So if you click on that particular region, you're, you've got an actor that responds to things. You've got clickable regions right there. Variety of different areas available. Each again, if you wanna have a mouse over or a click event. So this guy right here, let's go here to point mode and you'll get an idea. So this particular area of the environment is being controlled uh, via this actor. You can see here it's responding to various different uh, touch or mouse. So you've got the eat cursor active or the look or the talk or the use or the item cursor, it will respond according. So if you look at this, you'll see it will fire off this particular script and then it basically just give off a message for what you've done. If you try to eat that area, same thing. So again, it's a lot like the visual novel. Point and click obviously is just a little bit different in terms of the setup. And then the final guy is the uh, the working in 3D aspect of it. And uh, well, I'll, I'll show it, but uh, I, I wouldn't go there personally. So that one here is the 3D dungeon. The game itself is actually, it's fine. It's uh, um, kind of an eye of the beholder type thing. There's no orientation here. All your 3D work is done as 2D that is projected upwards. It's very um, painful in that regard. But I'm gonna go ahead, we'll run this guy. We'll check out what it actually creates. So this demo, I'll show you what the demos actually make because this demo is actually fairly new. And it allows you to create this kind of game. So here you can see your world here. You can go into the item shop. You could buy something or you can go ahead and leave. Weapon shop, buy something, pick what you wish to buy like so pick how many of these things you wanna go buy. You've bought it, it is now available to you. And then here we go back to, um, so hit escape, finish that. And then when you're ready, go ahead, enter the maze. 
And then it is a first person Eye of the Beholder style game. And then as we walk through things, so let's turn like so. It's just, so it's, it's fine. Uh, so we got a guy right there. There's your combat type setup. Uh, it's just, this is one of the kludgiest systems uh, for creating 3D games out there. I would actually argue that everything else you saw is actually pretty good. If you're trying to create a 2D style game, it's a decent choice for creating a 2D style game. If you're trying to create a visual novel, it's a decent choice for creating a visual novel. If you're trying to create a 3D game, don't. <laughs> so that's my feedback on this one. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the incredibly stupidly named royalty-free 001 Game Creator STEM Bundle. Don't know why they went with that name, but ultimately it is the 001 Game Creator Bundle with some DLC. Uh, again, uh, if you're creating adventure-style games, visual novels, uh, if what you saw looks appealing to you, it is exactly what you saw. You're not going to be creating the next AAA title, but it, it's it's easy enough to work with. It's definitely getting a bit dated, uh, but it, it does what it does probably as well as RPG Maker does, unless you're looking, if you're very much creating a JRPG game, RPG Maker is going to be a better choice. But if you're just kind of dabbling and it's got all the systems in place and it probably gives you a little bit more flexibility to break out of the mold of what you could create with RPG Maker style games. And again, if you're making visual novels or point and click adventures, it's a decent choice, to be honest. It's, again, a little dated, uh, but those game genres generally are a little bit dated, too, and don't require the utmost in tooling. But if you're doing things like navigating through worlds, uh, different scenes, clickable areas, branching dialogues, eh, it does it well enough. Again, not cutting edge. Uh, it's going to be easier to use than something like Godot. Uh, but with Godot, for example, you could get an adventure kit or a visual novel kit and make it those kind of games using them. This, you don't need to do anything extra. Basically, you're getting everything out of the box. Um, same true for Unity, etc. This, this would be a lot easier to work with than either of those. But both of those engines would allow you to go a lot further, if, if you understand what I mean. So basically, what you saw with 001 Game Creator today, that is exactly what it's capable of. And frankly, not a lot more but it does what it does and it does it fairly well so let me know what you think um it is definitely getting a little bit dated but they are updating it still constantly doing bug fixes and uh, platform requirements and so on so it's not abandonware by any means but it's definitely a game engine from the last decade so let me know what you think of 001 game creator are you going to pick it up do you already own it let me know comments down below i'll talk to you all later goodbye